assalam alaikum class we have already covered how to select a title for your research project and in our previous lecture we have already discussed that how do we do literature search now we are in the phase of development of our synopsis how we plan our research and how we present it in front of the higher authorities for the approval which are basically your academicians and faculty members who will approve your synopsis which is basically the plan of your research work and then you will be allowed to conduct your research activity fine so today's lecture will be concentrating on the topic of synopsis development the learning outcomes of today's lecture are that we will be discussing that what is the difference between synopsis dissertation research report and article these four forms are basically four different types of presentations of research work so we will be discussing in detail that how synopsis is different from dissertation how dissertation is different from a research report and how research report is different from an article and what you are supposed to do in your fourth year mbbs we will be discussing in this particular uh, lecture that what are different components of synopsis we will be di discussing that what are different steps in research conduction and how these steps help us in writing up of synopsis fine so these are basically the learning outcomes of our today's lecture so moving forward the first component is that what do we mean by a synopsis synopsis is basically a plan which a researcher makes and he presents his plan to the higher authorities which can be the faculty members which can be other academicians which can be other researchers that this is the most probable plan for which i want to conduct my research activities according to it and now the student needs approval after the submission of the synopsis so basically synopsis is the plan of the researcher that how he will conduct his research he introduces his topic he tells about his objectives um <coughs> which he wants to meet in this research work he defines his operational definitions and then he describes the methodology that where he will conduct this research how many participants will be included in this research what is the time frame of this research what will be the inclusion criteria what will be the exclusion criteria of the patients who will be involved in this research or the other research participants and then finally the researcher attaches a tool to the synopsis or a questionnaire on which he will do the measurements so for in a nutshell i will say that synopsis is a plan which a researcher makes and after approval of this plan he executes his research how synopsis is different from dissertation synopsis is the initial plan once it gets approved by the technical review committee by the ethical review committee or by the institutional review committee a researcher goes in the field he collects data he um, analyzes his results he compiles his results and he discusses his results and he presents the whole research which has been conducted by him in the form of dissertation or it's a uh, it's also known as a thesis usually a dissertation or a thesis is required for uh, post graduations usually in masters in mphils and in uh, phd's and uh, the whole uh, uh, compiled dissertation or thesis uh documents the whole work which has been done by a researcher and it almost takes 3 to 4 years to complete the dissertation for an mphil 
or for a PhD. So uh, by the end of completion of the dissertation, a degree is awarded. So <coughs> usually we say that a researcher plans and he makes a synopsis. And after the approval of the synopsis by the competent authorities, he goes in the field, he conducts his research, he collects the data, he analyzes the data, and he discusses the results which has been formulated by his research. Uh, and he uh, compares and contrasts them with the international data. He compares it internationally and combines all the research in the form of a book or a thesis or a dissertation, which is an essential component to get a degree of master's or PhD or um, any other um, course or certification for which it is required. Fine. So what do we mean by a research report? A research report is basically the requirement of the University of Health Sciences and for which we will be working. The research report is a shorter form of dissertation in which undergraduate researchers go in the field. They, the first stage is the synopsis development. Again, the synopsis development is the first stage of the research conduction. And once the synopsis gets approved, the undergraduate researchers like you, uh, like fourth year MBBS students, they will go into the field, they will collect the data, they will analyze the data, they will discuss their results, and they will present this in the form of research report. What is the difference between the research report and dissertation? There are different components which make it different from each other. And above all, the dissertation is a very, very comprehensive work. It does not skip any of the dimension of the research work. But for research report, it is actually objective based. It is usually concise. It does not contain a bigger chunk of literature review, the chapter of literature review. The other components of the research report and dissertation are same. When we will be discussing that what are different components of different research writings, then you will be uh, knowing the difference between a thesis and a research report. At this time, you must know that the thesis is a very, very comprehensive uh, work done by a postgraduate researcher to uh, fulfill the requirement of completion of a degree. But a research report is basically uh, written by undergraduate students where they work in groups they go into the field, they collect the data, they analyze it, they formulate results, they publish it and in the form of research reports as part of the university requirements. And we as the affiliated College of University of Health Sciences will be focusing on the development of the research report at the end of fourth year MBBS. Fine. But remember always, whether you are planning for a research report or you are planning for a dissertation, you have to write synopsis first. And what is a synopsis? Synopsis is a plan of your research work. Fine. Going further, another form of publication uh, of research work is the research article. It can be an original article. It can be a review article. It can be a systemic review. Uh, it can be any form of the article. And the articles are being published in health journals, in medical journals, because now the researcher wants a bigger audience. And now the researcher wants that he wants to publish his research work in journals and in, <coughs> and in medical journals. So a bigger audience can know that what work has been done by a researcher. Yes. There are um, differences, again, from uh, with, within the research report and the article. The format of two are different. Uh, in a research uh, report, the format of writing up of research activities is totally different from writing up of an article in a journal. And yes, whenever you will target any journal, 
each journal will have its own requirement of writing up of an article. So, article is always journal specific. It is written in the form in which the journal wants at, us to write our research um, results. But research report has a specific format and we will be discussing it in detail. So these are different forms of presentations of writing up of research. So I will conclude by saying that the first stage for you will be writing up of synopsis. And the second stage will be write up of the uh, research report which is basically the requirement of University of Health Sciences. So moving forward, what are the components of a synopsis which we need to write? Okay, fine. The first component of writing up of a synopsis is writing up of a title. And we all know that how do we select our title? We have discussed in our previous lecture that a researcher selects a title which is relevant. It means it has a public health significance in the um, local context. For example, if you want to work on COVID-19, it is acceptable. It is relevant. If you want to work on tuberculosis, it is relevant for Pakistan. If you want to work on multi-drug resistance typhoid, it is relevant for Pakistan. Fine. So you have to pick a title which has public health significance. It means it is relevant to the Pakistani community. The second component for which you want to select your title is that it should be innovative. Something new should be done. It should not be done that the researchers are repeating the work which has already been done already. So you have to bring up something innovative to conduct the research. So your title should be innovative. Your title should be feasible to conduct. Do not aim high in your research. For example, if you do cannot access the CT scan of um, stroke patients, do not opt for having uh, CT scan findings uh, for stroke patients in your research activity. So find something feasible which you can easily do, for which you can easily collect the data. You have to select your title which is basically cost effective. You have to find your title which is which does not have any ethical considerations and it is socially acceptable. And we have passed this stage. All the research badges have already selected their titles. The next step which we conducted was conduction of literature search. And we in detail have discussed that there are many search engines. There are PubMed Central. There is Park Medinet. There is uh, Cochrane. There is Embase. And uh, there is Google Scholar on which the researcher can find out that what similar work has been done previously in different parts of the world. And what are their findings? That's why we have asked you to collect the literature search which was relevant to your title. Okay, now the last date of submission of your literature search was today. So why did we do literature search? We wanted to conduct literature search because we wanted to know that what already has been done, what is not done. What is known to the world about this particular aspect on which we are conducting research? What are important statistics which are known to us? What are different methods which are important to be conducted in this particular research? What, how should we define our objective? What operational definitions should be formulated for conduction of research? All this information comes from the literature search. Now, after conduction of literature search, now your step is, next step is, you will write an introduction. You will write an objective of your research. You will make operational definitions in your research. You will write methodology of your research. You will write references of the previous work which has already been done and you will be writing up a questionnaire. 
these all components will make your synopsis your synopsis has different headings it has a title <clears throat> the next heading is of introduction introduction means the researcher now introduces the subject on which he wants to work he introduces the title on which he or she wants to work he describes the objectives what he want to attain from this um research fine what are the operational definitions the operational definitions are those definitions which the researcher devises for the process of conduction of research and we will be discussing them in detail so what will be the methodology of conduction of research how the references are written and how the questionnaire is built and all these components will form a synopsis now what will we do your supervisors will ask the volunteers who want to write an introduction there will be two volunteers and two will write their introduction separately and the best one will be picked for your synopsis fine the introduction will all all uh, also contain objective and operational definitions fine then we will have an other volunteer who will be writing up methodology for us so the the further components of the research methodology will be conducted on the basis of voluntary participation but remember all those who will participate will be given a credit when there will be publication and they will be given credit for their extra work during the exams in their internal assessment as well as when the marks will be allocated for the research write up okay so let's discuss these components of synopsis one by one so what do we do while writing up of an introduction as i have already told you that introduction means the researcher wants to introduce the topic to the world to the community who is the reader of the research work so what does a researcher do he selects a topic we have already done it he conducts literature search we have already done it and then he starts writing up of introduction writing up of introduction means broadly the researcher defines the concept on which he wants to work it starts from the broader base and then ends up in a very very concise way for example if one of our research batch wants to work on the mental health issues of the nurses um, during covid-19 pandemic then the broader aspect will be that worldwide um x million of healthcare workers are affected uh, during the covid-19 pandemic fine reference number 1 um <laughs> they are not only physically affected in which they suffered from covid-19 and the death related to covid-19 but they have also suffered from the mental illnesses and the social consequences which are uh, produced by the pandemic of covid-19 reference number 2 fine during this um, um pandemic it was observed that a vast majority of nurses have been affected uh, by covid-19 reference number 3 some of them are affected physically reference number 4 a vast majority is affected mentally reference number 5 so you have started from a broader aspect and now you are bringing towards the concise um uh, concise portion of your research then now you are targeting what you actually want to target in your research in your introduction you give statistics you give numbers you give references you introduce the subject you give definitions you give epidemiology you discuss agent host and environmental factors you discuss risk factors if your objective is to discuss the efficacy of vaccines then you will introduce the vaccines which are available you will tell us about the route of administration you will tell us about the side effects and then you will go into the detail that how these vaccines are affecting the community so whatever you will be writing in introduction will be evidence based 
you cannot write a sentence from your own the researcher only writes the sentences which are evidence based and they have already been published somewhere so how these introduction will be taken the introduction will be taken from the literature search which you have already conducted a good researcher who wants to write an introduction will go through the introduction of 15 to 20 articles which he has done, um searched through literature search and he will uh, go through the introductions and then he will form a template in his mind that what information he wants to write in his own introduction but remember a researcher will not copy cut and paste the sentences which he has taken from the literature search he will always write the introduction in his own words but all the material which will be quoted in the introduction will be taken from the literature search and it will be referenced from wherever you will take a single line you will always reference it in the introduction so in a nutshell how you will write an introduction after doing literature search you will go through the introductions of all the relevant original articles you will form a concept map in your mind that how will you introduce your subject you will start from a broader aspect and then you will end up with a concise sentence you will quote different statistics of who nationally internationally and in of different countries whatever you will write it should be evidence based you will not copy cut and paste the material from the literature search but you will write them into your own sentences but whatever you will write you will reference it uh, from the literature search which you have already conducted fine so this makes the introduction so what will you do how will you write first of all you will write your topic you will write the definitions uh of the topic of interest on which you want to work you will give some descriptions you will give worldwide statistics about that topic you will give regional wide statistics about that topic you will give statistics of the neighboring countries you will give statistics locally for example let's assume that if you are working on the mental health issues you will say that worldwide uh x million of nurses have been affected with the mental disorders during the covid-19 pandemic um a study has been conducted in china which shows that uh, 80% of the uh, uh, nurses who worked in covid-19 um emergency ward suffered from depression uh and other study which was conducted in india showed uh, that the uh, nurses and doctors both had a toll on their mental health and they significantly showed this uh, amount of stress and anxiety they are feeling while working on the covid-19 because they felt that they can carry this infection to the to their uh, loved ones a uh, similar studies have been conducted in pakistan which showed the statistics that uh, uh, this number of uh, uh, nurses have suffered from mental illnesses etc etc so you will start from the definition of mental health you will start from the definition of the healthcare workers who are working and the nurses who are working then you will tell us about the statistics of uh, interest of your uh, uh, topic then you will go region wise neighboring countries and then the local and the national statistics you will also discuss in the second paragraph of the introduction that what is the epidemiology of the uh title uh, of your research work what are the risk factors which are involved how you can manage them what are different diagnostic criteria depending upon the title on which you want to work you will phrase your next two paragraphs in the end of the introduction you will tell us that what is the rationale of the study the rationale of the study means that why do you want to conduct this study what is the importance of conduct conduction of this research why do you think that this research should be conducted how it will help us to generate an evidence how it will help the public health physicians 
to devise strategies to overcome this um, problem fine so this makes the introduction remember whenever you will be writing introduction it should be written in times new roman the font size should be 12 it should be made in two to three paragraphs the a4 size papers uh, introduction should consist of about two a4 size papers and uh, the line spacing between them should be one or 1.5 so these are the basic guidelines of formation of introduction when you uh, write up of an introduction. Fine. So the introduction, the first paragraph will be the definitions and statistics. The second paragraph will be related to the subject. And the third paragraph will give um, further significance of the study. And in the end, you will be writing up why do you want to conduct the study and what is the rationale of the study. Fine. Let's suppose that we want to work on the mental health issues and uh, we want to know that what were the coping strategies of the uh, nurses when they were suffering from depression, uh, when they were working in COVID-19 pandemic. So our rationale of the study will be that while conducting this research, we will be able to define the coping strategies for the nurses uh, to cope well during this pandemic. Or we as public health physician can devise strategies and policies to reduce the stress among the healthcare workers or the nurses so uh, the mental health issues can show reduced incidence that is the rationale of the study fine okay <clears throat> let's suppose our title is mental health issues in healthcare workers during COVID-19 and this is your title so what will you do that you will do literature search you will go into Google Scholar you will write your keywords which are COVID-19 nurses and mental health Look at this, we have got 99,400 results, fine. So you will open these um, articles in detail and you will go through their introduction and a good uh, researcher for a good write-up uh, should uh, at least read 15 to 20 introductions, fine. Let's suppose um, that I take uh, this article as my first article and I... Uh, uh, take this sentence that there are 1.72 million COVID-19 infections and these many deaths worldwide and it has produced a strong mental health impact on the healthcare workers. Fine. So how will I proceed that I will write an introduction that COVID-19 has produced devastating effects on mental health status of the health workers. It has been estimated that worldwide 186 millions of healthcare pro uh, providers reported mental health issues last year during this pandemic. And this is the reference number one, that this statement has been taken from reference one, which was my reference study one. So how will we? I write my introduction and then my referencing? So for referencing, we have to opt for a Vancouver style of referencing, which is the requirement of the research report by the University of Health Sciences. And it is internationally accepted for the journals as well. So let's suppose that you have taken this article. What information do we need? We need who are the authors. So we can see that there are three authors who have uh, written this research. Fine. Okay. What is the title? This is the title. Where it has been published? It has been uh, published in Asia Journal of Psychiatry. Uh, when was it published? It was published in 2020. What was the volume? 51. What is the page number? The page number has been written. Okay, fine. So I have get all the information. So how will I now convert my referencing style into the Vancouver style of referencing? Fine. So for Vancouver style of referencing, it's a very, very specific type of reference style in which what do we do? We take the last name of the first author, which is in this case and then we take the first initial alphabet of the first name and the second name so I will say that Spurti capital M capital S comma is my first author fine so I will go to the next author which is now Pratapa S 
K. So you will take the last name as full name and the initials of the first or second name which will be attached and they will represent the author. In this case, we have only two names. So it will be Mahen S. If in Vancouver style of referencing, if there are six authors, we write the names of six authors and then <coughs> put full stop. If it is less than six, you will write the names of all the authors. If it is more than six, then after writing up of the names of six authors, you will put it all and then put full stop. It means any other author which is more than six in number will come in at all. After writing the names of the authors, what will you do? You will write the name of the article. Then you will write where it has been published, when it was published, what was the volume number, what was the issue number, and what is the page number. So let me give you an example. Look at this, that I have written the name of this Spurthi MS. You can see Spurthi MS, comma. Okay. The second is Pratapa SK. You can see Pratapa SK, capital, comma. The third name is Supriya Mahant. So it will be M Mahant S. Full stop. If there will be six authors, I will write the names of six authors. If it is less than six authors, I will write the name of all authors. And if it is more than six authors, after writing the name of six authors, you will put it all and then full stop. Okay, after writing the name of the authors, what will I do? I will go back and I will search that what was the article's name? What was the title of the article? So the title of the article will be written here. The mental health problems faced by the healthcare workers due to the COVID-19 pandemic A review. You cannot change the title. Fine. The third component is now you have to write where it has been published. It is the Asian Journal of Psychiatry. You have to always write its abbreviation. And this will be Asia Journal Psych. Then the abbreviation of the journal will be obtained from the Google. <coughs> After writing the name of the journal, you will put another full stop. Year of publication, full stop. Volume number, colon, issue number, semicolon, issue number, colon, and then the page number. This is known as the referencing style, which is known as Vancouver style of referencing. So how will we go? We have taken one sentence of introduction from this article and in bibliography, in referencing, I have written that my first line comes from this reference. Fine? Okay. So now I decide to write another sentence. So, my next sentence is that heavy workload. My first sentence was COVID-19 has produced devastating effects on mental health status of the health workers. It has been estimated that worldwide 186 millions of healthcare providers reported mental health issues last year during this pandemic. Heavy workload, fear of getting infection, carrying infection to family, facing high mortality was everyday challenge for these healthcare workers. Reference number two. So what will I do? I will take another article from which I have taken this information and I will write second at uh, second number that this is the reference from which I have taken the second. line. Look at this. Now the uh, authors are four. The article's name is uh, Mental Health of Healthcare Workers During the COVID-19 Pandemic in Italy. So the work has been done in Italy. Uh, the journal of uh, journal of evaluation and clinical practices was the journal it was published in 2020 volume number was 26 issue number was 6 and the page number extended from 1583 to 1587 so 158 is common in the second component so i will just write 1583 to 1 uh, to 7 and full stop 
So this is known as Vancouver style of referencing. So whenever you will be writing up of introduction, after each line, you will give one reference and this reference will come from the uh, literature search which you have already done and you will be using the reference style which is known as Vancouver style of referencing. And for Vancouver style of referencing, you will write the names of the authors, the name of the article, the journal where it has been published, the uh, year of publication, volume number, issue number, and page number. So in this way, you will write up the flow of introduction. Clear? So let's go back. How will you go for introduction? In, in introduction, you will write your topic, you will give some definitions and descriptions, you will give statistics worldwide, region-wise, neighboring-wise, local statistics, you will be discussing epidemiology, risk factors, management and diagnosis, and in the end, you will tell us that what is the rationale of the study, why do you want to conduct this study, it makes the introduction. Fine. So, two of your volunteers in the research batch will be writing introduction on the title and they will submit their introduction within one week within one week <coughs> so after writing up the introduction the next component of the synopsis is research objective remember always that objectives are reflective of the title fine so uh, and the research objectives should always be smart. Whenever we talk about the smart objectives, it means we want to talk about the objectives which are very specific, objectives which are measurable, objectives should be attainable or achievable, they are realistic, and they are time bound. So, whenever a researcher wants to formulate the research objective, he should know that the research objective should be specific, it should be measurable, be achievable, it should be realistic, and it should be timely. And remember always that objective is always reflective of your title. You always add a word of two and a measuring word with your title to make it an objective. Let me give you an example. Why do we formulate research objectives, by the way? Uh, for example, um, your title is Mental Health Issues in Nurses During COVID-19 Pandemic. Fine. So while formulating your objective, you will formulate to measure mental health issues in nurses in COVID-19 pandemic. Or you will formulate the objective in such a way to measure the frequency of depression in nurses during COVID-19 pandemic. Or you can see to assess the prevalence of depressive disorders among nurses during COVID-19 pandemic. So when whatever is your title, you will add a word of two and a measuring word to calculate, to make it measurable, to make it an object. Why it is important to formulate research objectives? Number one, it brings focus to the study. Definitely, you will, after formulation of your research objectives, you know exactly what you want to do. It avoids collection of unnecessary data. You will only focus on the data which is required to complete and fulfill your objective. Whenever you formulate your objective, it helps us to define the appropriate study design, that what will be your study design to meet that objective. And it also tells us that how will you plan your analysis when you formulate your research objective. Fine. So we will be discussing that what are different types of study designs and what are different types of analysis plan in our subsequent lectures. But this is important to know that once you formulate your objective, your study design becomes reflective of it. Your analysis plan becomes reflective of it. You bring focus to the study. You exactly know what you want to do in your research part. So. The second component after writing up of introduction is to write up of a research objectives. For example, um, these are few examples to show you that how you can formulate objective. For example, the title was anemia and pregnant women visiting tertiary care facilities of SEND. 
and to formulate it into an objective you will add a word of two and you will calculate a measurable term so to determine the frequency of anemia in pregnant women visiting tertiary care facilities of synth becomes an objective for example you have a title of maternal smoking and low birth weight fine you make it an objective by adding the word of two to determine association between maternal smoking and low birth weight will make it as an objective now now you know that your objective is to find out an association between maternal smoking and the occurrence of low birth weight babies okay fine another example is that you want to compare the effectiveness of two drugs or two dressings or two vaccines fine so you will add two compare the effectiveness of dressing a versus dressing b in patient presenting with infected wound of leg for example to compare the effectiveness of um, sputnik and sinopharm in prevention of covid-19 fine so whenever you add a word of two in a measurable word you convert your title into your objective so you have to write an objective of your research which is the second component of your synopsis the third component of your synopsis can be operational definitions and these are those definitions which are made by the researcher fine for example if you want to measure the depressive disorder in nurses and you are using a scale which is formulated by psychiatrists for example you want to use the das score and you will say that all those nurses who will attain a score of more than 14 will be labeled as depressed nurses so this will be your operational definition fine so the operational definition is not the bookish definition it is the definition which a researcher makes for himself for example uh, there are different terms of uh, exposure and outcome variables of interest which we want to calculate in our uh, research for example you want to see the anemia but what is the operational definition of anemia some researchers will say that i will look into the palmer creases to assess the anemia okay fine it's your operational definition somebody will say that no i will see into subconjunctiva and i will look into the paleness of the subconjunctiva okay it's your operational definition but some of the researchers will say no we will exactly calculate the hemoglobin and if the hemoglobin is less than 10 grams per deciliter we will label it as anemia and if it is less than 8 we will label it as very severe anemia fine so the operational definitions are those definitions which are made by the research for example if you want to measure the effectiveness of um, vaccines against covid-19 so how will you measure effectiveness as a researcher you know that your effectiveness will be measured in the prevention of occurrence of disease so you will say that after giving the vaccine i will calculate the number of uh, recipients who actually developed covid-19 and those who never developed covid-19 after getting the vaccine so i will compare those who have not developed the uh, disease after getting the vaccine with the other group which contained uh, which had the second vaccine to measure the effectiveness of the vaccines fine fine with me so you have to formulate the operational definitions of <coughs> the topic which you want to measure and how you want to measure them for example somebody says that i want to see the um, incidence of postpartum hemorrhage in the females of uh, females who are admitted in faruk hospital okay fine i will ask you that how will you define postpartum hemorrhage the bookish definition will say that the postpartum hemorrhage means the blood loss of more than 500 ml will be labeled as the postpartum hemorrhage but can you actually measure the blood loss in a postpartum period no you will calculate tentatively by the number of pads which are used by that female by the frequency with which she changes it or by the weight of the pad which she uses so 
the researcher has to define the definition how he or she will be defining postpartum feminine. The same case, if you say that I want to assess the uh, wound healing after giving a certain drug, fine. So what is the operational definition of wound healing? Um, if you will say that uh, if there is uh, um, granular formation, granulation tissue formation, or if there is increased vascularity, or if there is coverage of skin, um, if there is no pass, then I will say that the wound is healing. So whatever parameters you are using to measure the wound healing should be defined in operational definition. Okay, in some researches, uh, there is need to define operational definitions and we need a separate component in um, synopsis for operational definitions. There are certain researches in which the operational definitions are not required. In that case, we can skip this portion of operational definition. So your supervisor of your research batch will be telling us, telling you that whether you will be needing operational definitions or you can skip operational definitions from your synopsis. Okay, moving further, <laughs> the other components of the synopsis include the research methodology. So now we need another volunteer. One volunteer or two volunteers of your research batch will be writing up of introduction independently and the supervisor will assess their introduction and then he will finalize that which introduction should be selected for the synopsis. He will be writing introduction, he or she will be writing the references which are used in the introduction, he or she will be writing rationale. In the end of the introduction, he or she will be writing the objective of the research as well. And if the operational definitions are needed, he or she will be writing. Now we need another volunteer who will be writing research methodology, which is another important component of the synopsis. So in research methodology, there are different components and the headings will be given to each component and then they will be discussed separately. For example, the first component will be place of the study. Where do you want to conduct the study? Whether you want to conduct the study in students of Akhtar Said Medical and Dental College, or you want to conduct the study in nurses of Farooq Hospital, or you want to conduct the study in general population, or you want to conduct the study in medical students of Lahore, etc. etc. So what is the place of the study from where you will collect the sample? Where will you conduct the study? Fine. Time of the study. Time of the study starts from the conception of the title. So we will go back two weeks from now onwards and uh, it will say that we started our uh, research projects in uh, April first week. So and uh, the time when we will finish our research work. So the time duration for the conduction of the study will extend from April 2021 till August or um, September 2021. Okay. <clears throat> then what is the study design? We will be discussing in detail what are different epidemiological study designs when we will be studying uh, epidemiology. But for your convenience here, I must tell you that the study design which we have opted for all the fourth year MBBS projects is the cross-sectional study design. The cross-sectional study design is a study design in which the ob observer makes a single observation in one place in time and he makes the results and makes the conclusions. Right? So we will not go into the detail that what are the characteristics of the cross-sectional study design and how it is different from the other study designs just for the simplicity's sake for today's lecture. Just write it down that you are conducting a cross-sectional survey. These are different types of epidemiological study designs. I will not go into the detail. We will be discussing them in detail when we will be discussing epidemiology. Then sampling technique. What sampling technique will be using? Um, most probably, most of us will be using non-probability convenient sampling. Again, I will have a separate lecture on 
uh, sampling technique, that how sampling technique differs from one another and what are different sampling techniques, how one sampling technique differs from the other, what are advantages of the one sampling technique to another, which will follow this lecture. Fine. So you can ask your supervisor that what is the sampling technique for your research project. The sample size will be calculated by your supervisors and it will be told to you that what is your sample size. Then inclusion criteria. What is the criteria on the basis of which you can include your uh, sample? For example, if I want to work on uh, female nurses only, then my inclusion criteria will be females. Uh, between um, 18 to 45 years of age and those who are working in uh, Farooq Hospital, which is attached to the Said Medical and Dental College because I am only focused with the nurses who are affected uh, mentally by the COVID-19 pandemic during this time period. So this makes my inclusion criteria. All those criteria which exclude a, pa a patient or researcher will be given in the exclusion criteria. For example, one of the topic is that the um, comorbidity of diabetes uh, <clears throat> with COVID-19 patients. So if you are conducting a cross-sectional survey, all those patients who do not have diabetes but they have suffered from COVID-19 will be excluded from the research because you are only interested in those participants who have COVID-19 infection and diabetes. So your inclusion criteria will be the patients who have suffered from COVID-19 and have diabetes and those who do not have diabetes will be excluded from your research. The next heading in methodology, these are different types of sampling techniques and I have already told you that we will be discussing it in our next lecture. So the next uh, heading will be data collection tool. Yes, we will be developing a questionnaire on which we will be collecting data. You will uh, write it down that we will be developing a questionnaire. It will have multiple variables and the variables will be identified from the literature search again. Then data analysis plan. How will you analyze your data? You will enter your data in SPSS, any version which is available to you, and then we will be analyzing it. If they are uh, basically proportions, then we will be dealing with percentages. And if these are quantitative variables, we will be dealing with means and deviations. And we, and we will be discussing it in detail when we will be discussing uh, biostatistics. And what are different tests of significance which you can apply? Your supervisor will help at this moment. I will not go into the details, but this is a separate heading which should be done in the component of the methodology. And then how will you present your data? Will you uh, present it in the forms of tables or graphs or charts? Will you formulate bar charts, pie charts, line diagrams, scatter diagram, etc., etc.? So it will all be written in the methodology. So these are 11 components of methodology which should be discussed separately and they should be written separately and your supervisors will be guiding you on these uh, methodology and one of your volunteer of your research group will be writing up of methodology for this and of the company. So that this makes end of my lecture today and I will request those volunteers to come forward and uh, write up of their introductions and write up of their methodologies should be submitted to the supervisors when they allocate you the time period i think um a week is sufficient for that i will discuss it in detail with your supervisors and then we will be posting it on facebook that what is the deadline for submission of your introductions and methodology we will carry forward how to make a questionnaire um in my next lecture till then if you have any question, I'm available on WhatsApp. I'm available on Facebook. You can contact me. Thank you very much for listening to this lecture patiently. Thank you.